We now move on to section 3.2 equilibrium and there will be two videos. First one we're going to look at dynamic equilibrium. We're going to start by explaining what we mean by the term dynamic equilibrium. Now many many chemical reactions are reversible. For example the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia is a classic example of a reversible reaction, which means that all the time that nitrogen and hydrogen are combining to produce ammonia, the ammonia is breaking down to give you nitrogen and hydrogen, so the reaction is going both ways at the same time. Now, if you leave a reversible reaction long enough, eventually it reaches a state of equilibrium. And that is defined at the point at which the forward and reverse reactions are equal. So the rate at which ammonia has been produced is the same as the rate at which it's breaking down. So the concentration of the products and indeed the reactants no longer change. An important point at dynamic equilibrium is that the forward and reverse reactions have not stopped. They are equal, but they have not stopped which is why we use the term dynamic equilibrium as opposed to just equilibrium. So the forward and reverse reactions are still happening, but they're happening at the same rate. So let's look at this situation. So imagine we start off and we've just got reactant A in our beaker. So that's all reactant A. We've got none of B. So we're looking at a reversal reaction here between A and B. If we leave it for long enough, we eventually reach this stage here, which we've still got some A left, then we've got lots of B. And no matter how long we leave it now, this is not going to change. The amount of A and the amount of B is going to stay the same. A is still turning into B, B is still breaking down to give you A, but at the same rate. Okay. So at equilibrium, the concentration of the reactants and the products remain constant. Not equal, but constant. Now, one important thing you have to do from a graph like this is uh, identify the point at which equilibrium was reached. So the equilibrium is reached when the concentration of the products and reactants no longer change. So that's when they sort of flat line. Okay? So in this case it's taken about 80 seconds for the equilibrium to be reached. For the first 80 seconds the concentrations are continually changing but after 80 seconds they no longer change. So at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants and products remain constant, although not necessarily equal. Okay, so this is just the same graph shown again, and I'm going to add in these little diagrams again. What it looked like when we started, and what it looked like when we finished. So we started off with lots of A in our beaker and finished off with just a little bit of A and lots of B. Now, let's assume that we start, it's the same reaction, but we start from a different place. So instead of having the beaker fill up with A, we have it fill up with B. What we find after we leave it for a certain period of time for equilibrium to be reached, at equilibrium is the exact same in both cases. We end up with the same concentration of A and B no matter where we start from, and that goes for all reversible reactions. You always end up at the same equilibrium point for a given reaction, okay, no matter where they start with 
og A er no B, or is that with all B, no A? We still end up at the same place. It might not take as long, or it might take longer to reach equilibrium, depending where you start. Uh, in this case here, equilibrium has been certainly reached by about 60 seconds, whereas up here it took 80 seconds. So, uh, because our starting point was nearer the equilibrium point, it didn't take as long to actually reach equilibrium, but the constellations were the same in both cases. Okay. Depending on the reaction, the equilibrium point you might have a lot more reactant than product, or you might have more product than reactant. So, in this case here, we've got quite a lot of product and less reactant, so we've got more product at equilibrium. Whereas in this case here, we've got more reactant Now, if I'm carrying out the reactions, it's usually because I want to make a product. So, if we have the situation, we're reasonably happy. We get quite a lot of product, only a little bit of reactant left over. In this situation, we've got lots of reactants left over and very little product. So, we're not so happy in this situation. So, in the next lecture, we're going to look at how we can manipulate the equilibrium position if we have this situation. Okay, so four things you should be able to do. You should be able to explain what is meant by the term dynamic equilibrium. You should recall that at equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions are equal but have not stopped. You should recall that at equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and products remain constant but not necessarily equal. And you should be able to recognise from a graph the point at which the equilibrium has been reached.